Well, in, at that period, just before the First World War, um, the, the Arctic, uh, the Antarctic and the Arctic, a, a lot of exploration had taken place. In fact, uh, you know, Roel Amundsen, he reached the South Pole, and then, of course, uh, Scott followed him shortly afterwards. And then uh, a report came back from America that uh, Robert Peary had reached the, the, the North Pole. Now, the British were the great explorers. They, they were huge in, a, a, in polar exploration, and yet they hadn't managed to reach the two poles. So there was a great debate going on in Britain was that the next big thing was what they called the Third Pole, which was the highest mountain in the world, Mount Everest. So there was need to go in and find out where, uh, what the best way in to the foot of the mountain was and what was the most feasible route. So they knew just sending out an expedition to go and climb Everest, uh, the, the first expedition would really just have to go and find out, uh, you know, how do we get in there? How do we, where's the best route of ascent? And they knew they very unlikely you could do that in one season. So they come up with the idea of having a, a reconnaissance expedition. The expedition consisted of uh, surveyors and climbers, and they all they all they rendezvoused in Darjeeling. They met, and Howard Bury had organised a hundred mules and uh, muleteers, and he'd also uh, organised he had about thirty uh, boatiers, uh, what we now call sherpas. But uh, the, the, uh, he he had got advice from the officer in uh, Bell in Tibet that if he was going to hire locals, to hire these um, uh, Sherpas from um, Nepal. So he, he, he organised, but they, they all met at Darjeeling and then they proceeded to work their way through Sikkim. Uh, you have to go over a high pass, the Jelly Pass, and uh, it's over 14,000 feet. So that's a huge, and then you've got to drop about 5,000 feet and then it, through, you know, uh, dense forestry and... Um, you know, really uh, beautiful um, countryside. Uh, and uh, because Howard Bury was a botanist, he, he really enjoyed all this and his, and his notes and his, his, uh, his uh, diaries from all that, his reports back, illustrates just how, how much he was at home doing all that. But uh, it was hard work. The, don the, the mules they got from um, the uh, British Army in India were... Useless. So he spent half of the journey, every village he went to, um, hiring local mules, replacing the mules they got. So he, he did an awful job. Now, it turned out that uh, Callis, who was one of the very experienced climbers, um, he got sick. He had just come from climbing other mountains and he hadn't had time to rest and recover. And he suffered very severely from altitude sickness and he ended up being carried from camp to camp. And he actually died just as they were, I suppose, reaching the borders with Tibet. 
and uh, they had to bury him uh, there. So, and also their other very senior climber, um, uh, a Scotsman, Rayborn, he was also sick and they had to they sent him back to re- rehabilitate for a few weeks to get his, you know, he, he was suffering from altitude. So it, it didn't look great at the start. The Indian survey did most of its mapping from, the, from India, the ter- Indian territory. They weren't able to go into Nepal, or to, so they took the opportunity of this expedition to revise. They, they had an existing uh, quarter inch the Moyal map of Sikkim, but there was blanks on it. So they put one crew to work just revising that map. So it was a, a surveyor and a team and from day, before even, they set out before the main team on to do that. Then they had another team then whose job it was to do a quarter inch map of the approach in and into, right into uh, Tibet. And then they had, they were going to make a one inch map of the Everest, completely surrounding Everest. Now that was a huge task to do in the time they had. But uh, Wheeler, had learned um, how to do f- what they call photo geometry. It was, uh, it was the latest tech. And he brought, he, when he was home in Canada, he bought a kit. And that kit then it was paid for by the RGS. But that kit, he used that kit to make uh, a one inch map of, and he sometimes had to sit out really bad weather. So he, he, he would maybe get one good day in four. So he was four days out was waiting for it to get the sky to clear so he could take the, the shots. But basically, he used the camera the same way as this, uh, uh, lined up with a theodolite. And he took all the pictures. And then afterwards, they would, all the work came afterwards in the editing. They would line up all the pictures and get. But it was a very, very accurate mapping process. And he was great at it. People like Mallory, they, when they went to the Alps, the highest altitude they would climb in the Alps would, would be Mont Blanc. So they were used to being able to climb up to, say, 4,800. So 5,000 metres was, they knew if they could climb up to that. But when you went over 5,000, because the Everest Base Camp is at the height of, it, it's around 5,000 metres. So that's sort of, a, you know, um, the, the more or less the top of Mont Blanc. But when, when you try to climb higher, uh, you're on 50% um, less oxygen than you would be at sea level. So uh, it, obviously your, your your mind doesn't, your brain doesn't work that well. Everything is slower. Uh, you, you get cut cold. And I wasn't known for sure if you could actually survive at that sort of altitude. So there was all sorts of experiments going on. And a, a lot of scientists reckoned that you needed supplementary oxygen in order to to safely climb it and that. And indeed, uh, the Callus on the first expedition, he was an expert in this and he was experimenting in um, oxygen c- systems and kits for climbing in the Himalayas. So th- there was a good bit of knowledge ab- about it. But uh, nowadays, uh, you know, it, it, it's very, very, very dangerous for someone to, to be any more than, say, 24 hours over um, 
uh, 8,000 metres. And my own experience of being up on the mountains, I noticed when I, I've been over 8,000 metres a couple of times, and I noticed that if you, if you take off the oxygen mask, the colours diminish. You don't think as quick. You move slowly, because, basically because you're, there's less oxygen to your brain and everything just seems to happen slower. And, uh, you know, your, the sharpness is, is, is... Things go out of focus a bit. And so you don't, you don't perform, you know. So in order to climb Everest without oxygen, you, you really would want to have been living and operating at, at, high, at high level to get yourself acclimatised to be able to operate. If you look from a distance, you could see the, the ridge that was coming down, the northeast ridge, it looked like the, the, a lion that was cl very climbable from a distance. And the way to get onto it, there was one mountain called Changxi. It was, they called it the North Peak of Everest. So between Changxi and, the, and that northeast ridge is a call, like a saddle on the mountain. And that is now known as the North Call, or in Tibetan it's the Chang La. Getting onto the Chang La was the key, but when they got up, uh, they got up onto it, uh, when they, as soon as they actually reached the call, they were blown out of it with gales and winds, and, and the weather was totally unfavourable, so they weren't able to go any much higher than that. Now, Mallory would have loved to have gone up, further up the ridge, but the weather just didn't allow them. But they did actually reach the call, and they did, they did uh, very, very clearly, that was a very viable route. When they came back, of course, uh, the expedition was absolutely 100% successful. They did everything they went out, we were sent out to do. The map was an astonishing piece of work. Howard Bury and Wheeler did a huge amount of work. When the expedition proper was finished, Howard Bury went, walked into Makalu with Wheeler and they took additional photographs and they spent extra days up there just to complete the circle to get pictures of the Kangshung Glacier and, uh, and they went right up the fourth highest mountain of the world, Makalu. They went right up into the base of that. Um, they also, in the process, they had discovered the, the worthiness of the, the Sherpa. As all subsequent expeditions have used the uh, Nepali Sherpa as uh, um, people who, who live in the Solo Kumbu area of Nepal. They've used those as, as mountain uh, guides. They, they completed the maps of Sikkim and the approach map. Uh, so the, all subsequent expeditions have used that approach route in. Wheeler found a, a way from the Rongbuk Monastery uh, up the Rongbuk Glacier and then uh, turning left into the East Rongbuk Glacier. Uh, the expedition came over the Lark Vila Pass, but uh, his, his research found a, a better way to get to the same place. And so all subsequent expeditions used that. They, yeah, they did a complete appraisal of the plant life and uh, you know, their, their reports on flora and fauna were outstanding.
But when we were going to have an Irish expedition, we were always going to follow the Tibetan route, the Mallory route, because that was Howard Bury's route, and it seemed appropriate to us that an Irish expedition would follow it, you know. And, uh, and we were delighted that we were successful on it. And it was the first Irish expedition, and it was terrific that we did actually, we were successful on the mountain. Like we, uh, although Dawson got to the top of it, we always have, it's always been a team effort because uh, to get all the, to get the tents and everything into place was a complete team effort. It was just the two of us. We, we, we camped at 27,000 feet and we had a, just a small tent and the two of us and we two bottles of oxygen each and uh, unfortunately uh, the two bottles I picked, they didn't appear to be full and by the time I got to the first step I was out of oxygen. Dawson was, had one bottle of oxygen used and he had still one full one. And we reckoned we were about three and a half hours from the summit. We were 250 metres in vertical height, but we were about a half a kilometre in distance. So I reckoned I would have only, if I tried to climb with him, I would have just slowed him up. So it was better for him to go as quick as he could with the oxygen. And he, did, he got to the summit um, on the 27th of May in 1993. And it was, a, yeah, it was great for us all. I was descending down off the mountain, trying to mark the way as best I could for him coming down. In fact, when he come back to where I was, his oxygen ran out. So you know, he had the same experience as me, get descending down to where our camp was. But we managed to get off the mountain in one piece and we descended off the mountain in a blizzard, you know. So we had just got the two good days that we needed. 